Welcome to another unit in this VBA course. In this unit, we're going to talk about so-called for loops. A for loop I'm going to use whenever I'm going to repeat like part of my code, which has the same structure. Can be seen a little bit like in math, the sum sign or the product sign. There, I'm also doing more or less the same structure over and over again. The only difference being I'm adding this up to my output. So basically, if I want to realize like a sum sign or a product sign, I'm going to use for loops as well. Here, however, I want to do this a little bit differently. Here, if I take a look at this prepared program, I'm basically reading the input data here, I'm calculating output where it multiplies both of them, and I'm outputting them. What I, however, want to do is more or less in each step to have him increase the first variable by one, then calculate the new output, report this. Increase the variable one by another one, calculate new output, report new output. And I want to do, have him do it for like five times in a row. And if I'm going to use this, first off, I'm going to need here an index variable I already prepared this as i as an indicator. Then I'm simply starting with four. This, as I said, this looks similar to the sum signs. And I start in the sum sign with the lower part as i being equal to, and that's the starting value. So here it's one, two. And now the part on the upper part of the sum sign. And here that's five. So he walks through the i's with one, two, three, four, five. So doing five steps. Each step, he calculates the output, reports the output, and then what I need to add, he increases the variable by one. So he goes variable one equal to variable one plus one. So that's what he should do in each iteration. And then I only need to tell him, okay, at this point you're finished, you can go to the next iteration and well, I'm doing this exactly in this way. I'm telling him next one, next. And he starts again. He finished this for one, so he goes to two. Finish this for two, goes to three. Let's have a look how this works in practice. So here I start, first part, three times four, reports this. Now he increases the three by one, so he has four times four, that's 16, the second iteration. Third iteration, that's already increased by two, so five times four. Fourth iteration, fifth iteration, stop. So that's the basic structure behind this for loop. But, well, that's just the way how I can implement this. Starts going here to here. But what if I actually want to refer to this index? So if I'm actually doing something like, um, well, what we know from the sums. So what if I'm just taking my variable one and I want to add this always to the output. So then first would be a good idea to start with an output of zero. Then always add this variable in each work through to the output. And well, let's go not with the variable, but with the variable to the power of i. So this starts with variable one to the power of one, variable one to the power of two, and I always add this to the output. And I repeat each step of the calculation. So this is something like a sum, a sum where I'm always having this as a basis and I'm going to the power of i. This is, well, similar to some kind of geometric series, what I'm going to implement here. Only difference here, he repeats the intermediate output after each step. And well, if I work through this, looks as follows. 3, 12, 39, 120, 130, uh, 63 and stop. That's the five iteration you walk through. 
For example, I could also do the same stuff if I were to go with some other formulas, which we might know. I'm not going to do this here. This was just to illustrate that if I'm interested in, for example, implementing something like a geometric series, arithmetic series, any kind of series, I can very easily do this with a for loop. Of course, here I can use the steady or uh, increasing index from the for loop inside the for loop to calculate something based on this. So I'm doing the first one, I get a 1 here. Again, doing the second one, getting a 2 here, and so forth. Okay, now imagine I'm doing this 1,500 times. That would be quite a lot of work. However, I'm not going to click through 1,500 message boxes. So I want him to stop as soon as the output becomes larger than 300. So, well, that's an if clause. I'm going if output larger than 300, then... Okay, and then I'm only having to tell him how do I stop this for loop? How can I actually quit this? Well, that's also relatively easy because, well, I want to quit this. I want to exit it. So I go with exit for. Actually, I could do this even a bit more severe. I could also go with exit sub. This would close the whole procedure. So I'm only going to leave the for loop. I'm going with exit for. Well, let's have a look how this works. So it starts with 3, 12, 39, 120, and then stop, because the next would have been 363. Well, so this works perfectly fine. And well, that's also all there is I wanted to talk about in this session. So we learned about how to use for loops to go through a predetermined number of steps, all with a similar structure. How we can also use the index from the for loop inside the for loop. So, for example, if we want to implement something related to sums, related to series, related to products. And we learned how we can use the exit for, for some kind of um, premature stopping our for loop. In some cases, you might come across the comment that there also is some kind of continuous for or continue for which means I would skip everything which comes in this iteration and directly go to the next iteration. Well, Microsoft officially reports that there is a continue function. If we were to try this, we would however see he doesn't find anything. So, practically speaking, that's more or less fake news. So there is no pre-implemented version of continue for either the for or for any of the other loops. So with this in mind, I can close this unit. I hope you liked it. And if you want to see more units, feel free to visit the rest of the course or have a look at the corresponding playlist. I'll say goodbye and see you next time.